This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Sometimes for these less technical trips, I kind of like knowing enough to be safe, but not knowing enough to um, be surprised. everybody, Syntax77 here. I am in Virginia. It is the first week of April. I'm actually very close to the border with West Virginia. I'm kind of right on the line. And we're about to do the Little Schloss Loop, or at least a variation of it. I got three days. I got my backpack over here. I got some food. I got a hammock, real simple, a tarp, and we're gonna do some backpacking and camping. Just kind of hang out in the woods for the next few days. The weather feels great. It's about 60 degrees, so I'm loving that. Uh, might go down to the 40s, but I would say this is pretty much my, feels like to me, my first spring trip. So I'm looking forward to putting on the lighter pack, not dealing with snow or snowshoes or any of that. I'm back down to my uh, kind of ultralight, if you will, sub 10 pound, um, set up and over here is the trailhead we got the little stony creek trail there we're gonna go make a loop so yeah that's the plan actually i uh, i'm noticing you can see it right on here this mill mountain trail is the border between west virginia and virginia uh closest town for those of you local uh people out there it's like strasburg um i think maybe edinburgh is the closest small town but strasburg's the closest big one <sighs> let's uh actually record my track my last video unfortunately i uh left my old school gps i've had it since 2014 a garmin unit and i left it at the trailhead down in uh cranberry wilderness so i am being forced to jump into the new millennium and use my phone for navigation a little bit of uphill but nothing too bad so far of course with this amount of weight on my back compared to my winter loadout with all that crazy stuff everything feels a little easier I don't have any stools or saws or anything crazy like that on this trip. I'm going to keep it real minimal. Like I said, I just have the hammock, little 10 ounce guy, and 5 ounce tarp, uh, Dyneema fiber. And uh, just going to keep it simple. Now, ironically, <laughs> I'm not doing that many miles on this trip, which is when I usually bring extra weight and fun stuff, but. I just decided to do both, low weight as well as low mileage. This whole loop, it's like 13 point something, let's call it 14 miles. I may, just for fun, do a little bushwhacking at some point, make our own route. Might follow one of the creeks around here. Um, not an official trail, but might do something like that. Just go off trail and uh, make our own route but i'm not sure yet that'll be tomorrow today i'm only going to head in a few miles towards little schloss which we'll see is a vista and maybe look for camp around there which is why i have three liters of water with me pretty overkill but i want to have the ability to uh, camp whenever i want not too rocky right now, which is nice. Just some grass. I'm enjoying that. That wind is uh, picking up. The forecast is pretty good. Minor clouds, basically sunny for a uh, all three days which is great but there are some uh, wind gusts 
in the forecast, but I'll take that compared to being cold and wet or covered in snow. But at this point, I've done a pretty good push up from where I uh, left the Jeep and uh, gained some decent elevation. And now it's kind of leveling out a little bit. I think there's another push ahead of us, but we're under a half mile away from Little Schloss, which is the kind of Vista area. Some sandstone there. Interesting. We're getting up there. We're getting up there, that's for sure. I assume this is the final push. Come to a fork in the road, or the trail, rather. It either goes that way, or that way. From looking at my map, I believe the real trail continues that way. Um, this, I'm assuming right here, should be the, uh, perhaps unofficial, but, uh, trail nonetheless towards uh, the top of Little Schloss. Maybe see if we can get some views and uh, eh, perhaps even find a campsite. I believe that's it. Little Schloss as we squeeze between these trees. Another reason to have a nice small pack. There's some sort of bird, a hawk or something. I can't quite get a bead on him yet, but he's been circling around. Nice and clear out. further Can't say I'll be hanging a hammock up here, probably. <laughs> a little cramped, a little windy. I think I will uh, do a lunch break, though. Not bad. All right. Take this pack off. Take a little break. Check out the sights. This will work. Let's go in the old uh, grab bag here. I'm not going to do anything that requires a stove right now. I got some multi grain snack bread, grape jelly, peanut butter, courtesy of the United States Army. So let's uh, make a little peanut butter and jelly. Kind of crumbled up, but there it is. But. That's the price you pay for food that'll last for years upon years. This will uh, hopefully give me the calories I need 
to, um, I think I'm going to head down right behind where you're looking from. Um, there's another peak right there, but I'm not going to go quite that far. I think when I dip down within a quarter mile, there should be um, some camping opportunities. No water, but like I said, I got plenty of that. So that's what I'll do. But right now, I think I need some food in me before I continue along. Take a little jelly and a little peanut butter. Mm. Mm. Oh yeah. I don't think I realized how hungry I was. That's quite good. Hmm. So I'm gonna soak in the sights, hang out here with the birds, refuel, and um then I guess we got to drop down a few hundred feet. It's April, so we got a decent amount of time until sunset. Although, it'll happen fast, but... Mm -mm -mm. Back to the intersection. And now we'll go this way. Keep our eyes peeled. For somewhere to throw up a hammock and a tarp that I hopefully won't need because there's no rain in the forecast, which is awesome. We'll see what we come up with. Look at these little fuzzy plants. Someone will chime in that I shouldn't have touched that and my whole face is going to swell up now, but they're kind of cool. A bunch of them here. Alright. Now, oh, what do we have here? This is the first trail sign I've seen so far. Little sluice trail, which is what we're on, number 398. Bread Road. Apparently is a mile away and where we came from so we've only gone a little under two miles which is fine but first intersection we're gonna keep going that way although I'm curious oh yeah here's a fire pit so this is a campsite right here we're up on this ridge the um, top of little schloss is right over there we're still on that same ridge this doesn't look bad it feels a little exposed to wind and i don't see too many good hammock trees right here at least they're really small ones that's a little tight together this could work but it's right next to the fire pit i think i'll keep moving but that's a good sign we're on this ridge uh, of course, there's no water, but I do have my own supply. I'm doing fine with that. I see a big old clearing down here. I think uh, maybe I'll go towards that. Wow, it's like a, almost like a meadow around here. It's kind of cool. It'd be nice to have some open sky, maybe get some stars tonight. And also, a nice open campsite means the sunlight will work its magic a little longer compared to being back in the pines or something where it seems like it gets dark an hour before sunset take a look around here and uh, see what we got this is cool it's pretty open meadow right on top of the ridge looks like there's a little more trees over here that might work for a hammock There's a plaque. Interesting. Steve Holland. It's 
spanky. Big bucks and freedom. January 9th, 65 to November 8th, 2014. I guess this is a memorial for Spanky. Spanky liked uh, Gentleman Jack, apparently. It's grown right into the tree at this point. All right. Spanky's campsite, I suppose. I don't know what this is. <laughs> that is uh, a guy with some Jack Daniels. We're in the middle of nowhere and we got frame pictures and fire pits with a rack. All right. I don't know quite what this structure is here. Oh, probably for horses. That makes sense. Yeah, they probably bring horses up here. To haul their stuff in. It's a little easier than what I did with this backpack, huh? Yeah, that's got to be what that is. Well, that's pretty cool. I think this is it. I'm going to call it home. Take this pack off. Uh, look around. Find some trees. Oh yeah. That's not going back on for the rest of the day. It is 3.30. Doing pretty good on time. And uh, this is my new living room. With that gentleman right there. All right. Uh, let's set up. For some of your newer viewers out there, you've expressed a little interest in seeing some more logistics. So. Um, I'll probably show a little bit more about my actual camp on this video as far as mm, how I set up camp, camp chores, share a little bit of knowledge. Uh, speaking of which, good lead in, see what I did there? This video is sponsored by Skillshare. And if you're wondering what Skillshare is, Skillshare is actually an online learning community with thousands of cool classes for everything from photography to graphic design, productivity, all kinds of stuff. And one of my favorite teachers that I found goes by the name of Film VFX, learning how to edit in DaVinci Resolve, which is what I'm actually using to edit this very video. Each class has a whole list of lessons, as well as a project to do at the end of the course. And he really takes you all the way from the basics, all the way to exporting your first project. But maybe you don't even want to be a video editor. Hey, I don't blame you. Maybe you just want to learn how to, oh, I don't know, sketch. Well, look at that, a whole page. This one's got 23,000 students, urban sketching, drawing what you see. When you join and become a member, it's less than 10 bucks a month and you can get access to as many classes and teachers as you want. And as a special bonus, the first 1,000 of you to click the link in my video description will get a free trial of premium membership on Skillshare with unlimited access to as many teachers, lessons, and classes as you want. So thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this episode. And speaking of learning, let's get back out there and set up our camp. So first things first, a tarp, which I keep on the outside of the pack. Nice and easily accessible, because right now, if it was raining, the last thing I want to do is not be able to get to my tarp very quickly. The nice thing about a hammock setup, is that unlike a tent where you got to set it up in pouring rain and it's getting soaked um, with the hammock setup i can set up my tarp first so let's say it was raining right now i would just bust the tarp out set it up like i'm about to between the two trees and then i would have a base of operations where i could um, organize get myself together calm down and do everything nice and dry um, but in my case that's not an issue but I'll still do things as I usually do. So this is a Dyneema fiber tarp. They're not cheap, but they're super light. This is a eight and a half by 12 foot tarp, and it's only like five ounces or so. Um, not including the lines, which I have like Dyneema, or I'm, uh, pardon me, I have uh, Zingit lines, like a synthetic nylon uh, rope with coating on there so it doesn't get tangled up very easily so I'll put that out I have a ridge line with that that I have separate it's just the way I usually like to do it 
I will run my ridge line first. And the cool thing about this setup is on these Prusik loops here, all right, um, that slides back and forth when there's no tension. Let me release the tension a little bit. Um, that Prusik, I can slide it back and forth. So what I do is I don't have to worry about centering the tarp. I'm just gonna put the line up first. And then once it's up, I can attach the tarp and I can slide it back and forth on here. And once, once uh, pressure is applied, that Prusik will do its job and it's not going anywhere. That way I don't have to um, fiddle around with centering the tarp, redoing knots and all that stuff. I just do it once and slide back and forth. That's particularly nice and useful. Um, again, in there's situations where there's a lot of um, uh, time pressure because of rain or something. So let's put that up. So on this side, it's the non-adjustable side. Clips right on there, tightens up. And then I run it down to the other side. On this side, I have the Dutch Wasp. It slides back and forth really easy. And if I want to lock it in, I just kind of pull a piece up around the butt end of the Wasp, and now it won't go anywhere, it can't move. And I got my Prusik right there, and I'll clip my tarp right onto it. There we go. And now he's on. I do have the uh, snake skins on there, which basically means my tarp right here is shoved in these two skins that hold the tarp up and out of the way. Not only is that nice for packing it up in your bag, but the main reason I do that is because as you can see, it's sticking out a little bit, but that keeps it nice and tight and up and out of the way. For fair weather like we have right now, I'm not gonna mess with the tarp right now. Sometimes I even go to bed with it in that configuration. If I wake up to raindrops, then I'll bust it out real quick. Um, I'll just keep nearby my tent spikes. In my case, I just got some titanium shepherd's hook um, spikes. They're like under a quarter ounce, 0.2 ounces a piece. So I got six of these and those, um, weigh 1.2 ounces total and it's just another way it all adds up to keep your weight down on these trips so next up the hammock it's my quilt down quilt i'll need that for later and my down under quilt that's important too keeps my butt from being cold when under quilt and now is the time where you always go oh my god imagine if i didn't bring my hammock but i got it so this is it right here real small 10 ounces plus suspension so you always have suspension for your hammocks this is a dutchware half wet hammock you'll see in a second um but the cool thing about these hammock systems is they just have loops on the end like that right so depending on my mood or weight parameters i bring a different suspension for each trip in this case i was feeling in the mood to go minimal and lightweight so two of these suspensions here it's kevlar yeah the same stuff from bulletproof vests and whatnot kevlar strap 2,000 pounds i think at least um, of max load and attached to it is some am steel which is a uh, rope that basically has the strength of steel hence the name and a whoopee hook on the end super light super simple requires a little bit more finesse to set up compared to like a buckle system but the whole system with the suspension we're talking you know 13 12 point something you know let's call it 13 ounces um pretty awesome compared to like a tent or something so I will put these straps up on either end. The stuff sack is uh, double ended. So basically, just all pops out. With the Wolfie hook system, grab it up here and just pull. And it's basically braided through itself. It's pretty cool. So I can pull it up like that. Once you put load in it, then the um, braids compress and it's not going anywhere. So. 
that's it really. I'll play with this and get the tension right. You want like a 30 degree angle for hammocks. Um, so I'll mess with it. Rule number one, check your pockets. You don't want to have anything abrasive in your pockets when you're getting in a hammock. We'll take off the knife there. And my keys, I should probably put safely in my pack anyway. And then uh, you just hop in. Like I said, this needs some adjustment, but I got sunshine on me. I'm feeling pretty good right now. This is awesome. The reason this is 10 ounces is because, as you can see, if you've seen hammocks before, maybe you haven't, a lot of times they have a whole integrated bug net with a zipper and all that. And that's great, but that's all weight. I like this one because it just has this draping bug net at the end. If there's no bugs, I can sleep this way and not even mess with it. In my case, it's a little warm. So there's a couple bugs around, but nothing too bad. So what I'll do is, uh, when I go to bed, I'll adjust this and um, I can lower this down and slide it back and forth too. And that'll come right down onto my quilt, basically a blanket that'll seal off. No bugs are going to get to me. If bugs aren't a problem, then we'll just keep it up and out of the way. Or like right now, huh, I mean, who needs a camp stool when you got a hammock? I'm, I'm, I'm hanging out. I'm chilling. I'm doing good right now. So that's it. That's my house. That's my home. Tarp, hammock, and then later I will put up the, um, the quilts. I got a top quilt, basically a sleeping bag, but it's a blanket. It's made out of down. And then my under quilt. We'll check that out later. That's it, man. That sun is right on me. It's feeling good. about four o'clock now so I'm thinking uh, I don't know might do a snack or something got my new stove a little BRS titanium under one ounce I uh, used it on my last trip worked good and for 15 bucks I can't really complain so got that mini can of fuel not the most cost effective uh fuel can uh compared to the larger ones they're a bit of a rip off but uh they are small so it's kind of nice sometimes got my titanium pot and some water and just for fun to vindicate Matt's noodles from last time. I've been schooled. People have told me it's not pho, it's pho. Uh, I got some pho noodles, a little uh, coconut oil and some seasoning and sriracha packet. We'll put that in there. So just turn this baby on. Not using a windscreen, so not super efficient, but that's all right. I'm gonna put this in there or on there. Get it boiling. Pop the noodles in when it boils, cut the heat, and uh, let it sit. <sighs> A little meal. Although I'll tell you what, the bugs are out and they're attacking me right now. There's a lot around. So, in the winter, usually kick a fire to stay warm in the spring i think we're gonna have to kick a fire to uh keep the bugs away which one just landed right in my suit yeah so time for a little smudge fire after this i guess
I mentioned earlier that uh, I didn't bring a saw on this trip, which I guess was a little bit of a lie. I did bring this little one ounce ultralight survival saw, uh, basically textured metal with some handles on it. But to be honest, I think you're better off just bringing a real saw or nothing at all. Um, I've tried using these before. Um, I'm on my first cut of wood here, probably 12 minutes and 700 calories burned on one piece. Um, yeah, it would have made more sense to carry a saw up here on my pack that actually did some work. So, I might finish this off, maybe, um, for the heck of it, but yeah, I think we're just going to go with uh, picking up some stuff that we can break with our hands, like that, should be just fine, yeah, survival saw, eh, maybe not this time. But we will survive. There's plenty of small wood around. Yeah. <sighs> oh. Some small stuff to get things started. Some slightly thicker stuff for later. We'll get there. All right, dinner time, main course, a little shepherd's cottage pie uh, from Packet Gourmet. Ooh, and I got a boil going on there. So, main meal right there, and some mashed potatoes there. Just gonna eyeball this and hope for the best. Whoa, as long as I don't uh, spill my precious water everywhere. about two-thirds in there one-third over here let that sit for 15 minutes and uh, this should turn into mashed potatoes hopefully and this should turn into shepherd's pie I'll add the potatoes over top and we'll see what happens Whew. it's definitely uh, it's getting windier and colder temp is dropping for sure but at this point it is eight o'clock so we're pretty close to hiker midnight Good morning, everyone. About seven o'clock. The sun is out. Never bothered putting the tarp up last night. 
Well, I should say the tarp is up, but I never deployed it. Which was perfect. Nothing better than that, in my opinion. Than when you can have, uh, with confidence, no tarp. Because the stars were out nice last night. And I just laid right here, looking straight up. If I occasionally woke up in the middle of the night, I had the stars right above me. It was great. So there's a nice little campsite on this ridge here. Slept good. Here's my fire pit over there. And uh, quilts kept me warm. Got 30 degree under quilt there from hammock gear and um, 40 degree top. And I think the low was probably in the 40s. So no issues there. I can usually push these about 10 degrees below their rating anyway. But yeah, I'm, um, I guess I'm going to get up now. So let's put on some shoes. Uh, see where things go here. feel too cold right now which is nice which is why I'm getting away with my trail runners instead of boots my wildcats they definitely are not something you want to wear when it's cold because they're pretty much just mesh they got good good support to them but the advantage of them is they dry really quick and they're light but cold air goes right through them so I've taken them down into like the 20s on a trip in West Virginia one time, but <laughs> it wasn't ideal. But for 40 degrees, it's fine. And if it gets back up into the 60s, maybe even 70 today, if we're lucky, um, I'll be glad I have these on instead of heavy winter boots. I think I need some coffee in my life. Courtesy of the army once again. Uh, some freeze dried or sprayed dried coffee straight from Brooklyn, New York in this little packet. I usually drink my coffee black, but maybe to get some extra calories, I'll have some emery creamer. And there should be a packet of sugar in here somewhere too. to break her down but that's that that's the top quilt there and bottom quilts same idea <clears throat> just unclip it and stuff it away then we'll take care of the hammock next this is not a full length under quilt it's um what they call three quarters length. So a lot of guys will put a, it, it basically, it covers from your shoulders down to around your maybe knee or calf area. And a lot of guys will take a small foam pad and put it under their feet because your feet are still exposed. Um, me personally, I find that if it's not, you know, below the thirties, maybe it's just the way I sleep. Cause I actually sleep on my side, sometimes even fetal position. Um, uh, my feet never get cold, so I don't worry about the pad um, unless it was real cold, at which point I would just get the full length um, under quilt. Anyway, that's that. And then the hammock itself. Because it has that double-ended stuff sack there. It's basically just a stuff sack with an opening on each end. So I'll just open one side. And then on my whoopee hooks, it's real simple. Like I was saying yesterday, I can unclip it because it's just a hook attached to this continuous loop at the end there. So if I take that off, now that's free. And I'll just stuff it in right on the line. 
tricky part is remembering not to leave your lines on the tree. Luckily, the Kevlar is kind of a bright um, yellow color. So that's the hammock, which leaves the tarp. There it is. It's in the snakeskin. Honestly, this will be fine. It's pretty well contained. Me personally, though, um, if you're a real gram weenie, I guess you'll cringe because here's an extra quarter ounce. But I like to still keep it in the original Dyneema fiber stuff sack that uh, hammock you're made for it. Just keeps it a little more organized and compressed for storage in my pack. And it stuffs right away. Nothing fancy. Don't have to roll anything up. Of course, it was a lot easier for me because I didn't. I didn't even use it last night. Well, believe me, I would have wanted it if I got some showers in the middle of the night. Um, and I've had that happen before. You wake up, a raindrop sit in your face. Believe me, it'll wake you up. And uh, you just grab your tent spikes. Trust me, you move pretty quick when you're getting rained on in the middle of the night but that was not the case for me. So there's that, and then I just take the line down, and that's it. You can hear some air traffic today. Probably headed to DC. We are in Northern Virginia. But uh, the birds are out too, which is nice. Anyway, that's my pile of random stuff and stuff sacks, and I will stuff those stuff sacks into the bag pack up and head out. All right, Spanky. Thanks for having me, bud. It was a good campsite. Good night. I enjoyed it. You continue to rest in peace, my friend. I am moving on. about 9 a.m. Actually, it's exactly 9 a.m. and 21 seconds on the dot. And we're back at it. I do believe we're headed up this general direction. I think the trail might be on the other side of this. I'll tell you what, this pack feels a heck of a lot better without three liters of water in it. And a couple meals missing. Although, to be honest, that also means I have no water. I think it's probably maybe 1.8 miles or something like that before I get to what is actually listed on the Forest Service map, um, which I have that layer on my GPS app for my phone. I got the Gaia GPS app, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, an actual spring is listed. Uh, a little under two miles from here. It's also, the spring is right at the, what looks like the beginning of a brook. Uh, I guess maybe the spring feeds the brook going downhill. And that's where we might decide maybe to be a little more adventurous. Maybe go off trail. If it feels right and safe. <sighs> Create our own adventure, you know. And this trail is pretty wide open right now. Looks like it was probably an old forest road once upon a time. Got our first intersection of the day here. And a bullet hole. Um, so we've been following purple blazes. There's an orange blaze trail that goes that way. Continues on the ridge, it seems. But we're going to stay this way. A little fire pit over there and probably some camping as well. I've been tagging a few campsites I've seen thus far that are right on the trail. But I don't believe there's any regs about distance from the trail around here. For camping. And I'm here on a... Well, it's Monday today. Started yesterday on Sunday. So I haven't seen a soul. But 
we're gonna follow this guy and it splits again. I think, now I see purple. I don't know what that is. Looks like it might go to another meadow area. You can see the view of the mountains through there. That's cool. Some horse, horse prints in the dirt. And just make our way along towards some water, hopefully. About a mile in. So I think within a mile, we should be able to hit this water up. And then I'll probably stop and actually make some breakfast. So I am getting hungry now. Huh. All right, well, this is not the spring that I have tagged on my map. That should be in about another half mile, but this is water. So I'm thirsty. I think I'm still gonna push on to the actual spring. Just, I don't know, because that was my goal. Um, I'll push on to that to cook my breakfast, but might as well dip in and grab some water here. So that's what I'll do. Just a half liter or so. 591 mLs, I believe, to be specific, in this Mountain Dew bottle that I've been using. And no filter on this trip. Just got water purification tablets. So two of these per liter. So in my case, eh, let me pour a tiny bit out to be very correct. It's about 500 mLs there. And I'll just dump one tab in, and that'll take half an hour. But after half an hour, it'll be safe to drink. Then I have another tablet that takes out the iodine taste and makes the water clear again. It's called PA Plus uh, from Potable Aqua. I discovered that recently, and it's pretty nice. It makes the water just taste like spring water again. It never really bothered me in the first place, that little iodine tinge, but why not? So... Now I got some water. Let that sit while I hike on to my lunch spot or breakfast or brunch or whatever this is. Uh, it's like 10 o'clock. Just doing a relaxed pace. Trying to slow things down a little bit because honestly these miles are pretty easy around here. Um, it's not really crazy, rocky, rooty stuff so far. Not a lot of elevation gain uh, thus far today. So good excuse to just walk slow and soak it in but I am ready for some food from one water source to the next I suppose well that didn't take long I believe this leads to the spring I would assume this is where I have it tagged on my GPS this is the trail it's all running down and flooding the trail right now, actually. I don't know. We'll see if uh, it terminates up here in anything better. To be honest, the other one looked like it was easier to fill out of than this. But, oh, never mind. Okay, yeah, that's, that's convenient. A little pipe. There's two of them, actually. I guess that's the old one. <laughs> this one looks a little nicer right into the trough there, so that's uh, convenient. What's that? Lemonade spring. All right, I'm gonna have some lunch right here. Actually, right up there. Now granted, I'm in two miles now, so I could have gotten there yesterday, but there's an awesome campsite. I tagged it. So this was only a couple minutes walk, and up on that rise there, really cool campsite that um has some views through the trees on i'd say three out of four sides looking out at the mountains really um look like a nice spot but it's <laughs> it was only like 10 30. um i think that's a little lazy even by my standards to only hike uh an hour and a half before setting up camp so i'm not going to do that i'm going to push on um but this is around where I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll um, bushwhack. Because on the map, it looked like there was a brook 
that goes straight down and intersects the trail on the other side. This is like a big, long, skinny loop. But I don't really see a very visible um, brook to follow. It just looks kind of dense. And based on the fact that I'm making such good time, um, I think I'm going to skip the bushwhack and slow things down a little bit by doing the full route. But anyway, yeah, time for me to have a little uh, breakfast scramble. Get some energy. Finally, time to eat some food. 640 calories of sausage, potatoes, peppers, and eggs. I grabbed a liter and a half of water out of there just to hike with. And um, I'll hit the trail again. In a couple miles, when, when the loop starts to bend around at the skinny top of the loop, and then heads back down that other side on the um, opposite of the ridge here, um, I see another spring listed over by Sugar Sugar Knob and Sugar Knob Cabin. I don't know if that's a shelter or an actual cabin. I don't see any roads going up to it. So maybe we'll check that out. Um, or we'll definitely check that out because that's the way I'm going. So we'll see what the Sugar Knob looks like and what the Sugar Knob Cabin is. And then that'll be my last opportunity, I guess, to load up on water and uh, make another camp tonight. We'll see see what we luck upon that site over there was quite nice looking our site tonight um, will be a bit lower elevation than that but um, I don't know we'll see I researched this trip um, a little bit like I always do um, but sometimes for these less technical trips I kind of like knowing enough to be safe but not knowing enough to um, be surprised so I don't know all the details and that's fine. We'll figure it out together. But now I should probably quit my yapping and get some calories in me before we head back out on the trail. We'll be heading uphill at this point. Nothing too crazy. Probably only three or four hundred feet of elevation gain, which isn't terrible. The trail's still in pretty mild condition. So nothing too bad there, but I'll burn a little calories. Weather's holding out nice though. A couple wisps of a cloud. Stratus there, but for the most part, clear and sunny. And I'm down to a t-shirt, so can't complain about that. Guess we'll just uh, hump it uphill a little bit and see what's ahead of us here. Little mossy vibe. See a fire ring here. Nice little campsite with a log bench. At this point, I think I got my elevation pushed out of the way. I'm on top of the ridge. This is when, uh, you know, that oh so familiar feeling of going, man, maybe I should have just loaded up all the water before coming up the ridge. Cause it would be pretty nice to drop a pack right now it's two o'clock in the afternoon no rush but for a relaxed trip that's uh it's about when very often i start to daydream about just relaxing setting up a hammock on top of this moss or above this moss i should say but according to my trusty newfound friend the uh phone gps app that's working quite well for me, by the way. Um, the so-called cabin and the spring are a eh, quarter mile away, no more than three-tenths of a mile. 
So here's what I think I'm gonna do. I'm kinda at the apex of this narrow, long loop. Tomorrow, all I gotta do is hike out and grab a burger and drive home. I'm not worried about how many miles I have to do tomorrow, to be honest. My pack will be about as light as it has been the whole trip at that point. And the terrain isn't exactly murderous by any means or stretch of the imagination. So I'm thinking I'm gonna push on a quarter mile here, see what the cabin looks like, cause I do wanna see it, grab some water. Although I guess if I was truly desperate, I could use that puddle, but considering that, uh, oh, that looks fairly stagnant over there too. Considering I'm just using treatment tablets, eh, I don't really wanna drink muddy water right now. So I'm gonna push on this quarter mile here. We'll get a look at the cabin, but here's the deal. Worst case scenario, I'll get some nice fresh spring water. And there's no reason I can't rush back here a quarter mile and grab that campsite because I kind of like being up high here. And I think the stars will be really nice tonight. It's pretty nice and open. Part of me said, why don't you just drop your pack? But uh, you never know what's going to happen. I don't know this area. Perhaps there's another amazing campsite just ahead. In which case, I would be a little bummed that I didn't have my backpack with me. And to be honest, uh, it's just usually not my comfort area to leave the pack behind. I always end up finding one item after another that I feel like I should hike with, whether it's first aid to take, or my GPS messenger, or my water, or some food. Before you know it, I might as well just bring the whole pack. Camping within 100 feet is by permit only. Sugar Knob Cabin. Saw an outhouse up there too. No camping. Rental info. Number right there. Apple, uh, Potomac. Potomac. Appalachian Trail Club. All right, I guess you can rent this out. Water should be not too far down this way. We'll see. Huh. Well, I hate to say it, but this appears to be the quote unquote water. Actually looks a little less promising than that puddle did a quarter mile ago. These bugs too. Yeah, I don't want to hang around this water too long. Stagnant and buggy. So I'm going to work my way back out. I'm not even messing with that. I'd rather get water out of that puddle up there. At least it's big. That's what I'm thinking. Well, we came, we saw, we didn't conquer. So I guess that means we retreat. Oh, <laughs> and now I see a sign that says spring. Beautiful, woo! Spooked a pheasant or something. Look at this, that's better looking. <laughs> Sounds good, looks good. Running clear. Oh, and there's a pipe sticking out. Thank you, West Virginia or Virginia, whatever state I'm in right now. That was a quick fill. Two liters, just like that. And I got about a liter in my pack, so another three should do the trick just fine. And we'll hit this again on the way out tomorrow. But for tonight, we're good. So now, I suppose we do a little backtrack. Reluctantly put the pack back on and uh, head back towards 
home, I guess, wherever that may be. <sighs> Afternoon siesta, I guess. Feeling pretty good back at that campsite that I pretty much knew I was going to end up back at. Didn't take too long to get here. Got the sun on me. Got the tarp up, which eh, pretty sure I won't need again, which is nice. Make a little afternoon ramen noodles. Well, the birds are awake and so am I. It's about eh, seven-ish in the morning. Feeling pretty good. I've been up since six, actually. And uh, just en enjoyed the sunrise coming up and whatnot. Taking a look at my food. It's getting a little low. Uh, which is not critically low, so that's good. I timed it kind of well. I'm down to some more emery leftovers, some beef snack got my first strike bar apple cinnamon I don't know I think that might be kind of like a uh, energy bar type thing right there and I got one more thing of ramen and a little bit of water once again a little bit of water sent a little message to my wife here with the uh, new spot messenger I got I, I had a spot gen 3 which is just a little square version of this where all you could do um, well you had the SOS capability if you got in a jam um, they would send local search and rescue out for you but um, fortunately I never used that on my older one uh, just had a button for okay and a button that was custom that I made say you know I'm at camp right now and you'd have a contact list and in my case um, I just had my wife set up to get emails on that but this one's kind of cool. Um, they actually reached out to me and said, we think you would like a spot messenger. And I said, well, I don't do gear reviews anymore, but I've been, I've been using your Gen 3 and loving it for like seven years. Uh, and I didn't hear back from them, but uh, then it showed up. And it wasn't the Gen 4, it was the Spot X, which is kind of cool. So I'm just playing with this so far. Um, it's got its own dedicated cell phone number and it just shows up to anybody in my contact list that I want to as a text message. And then I can do the um, email check-ins as well. But I don't know. So that'll probably show up in future videos as I use it. But so far on this trip, it's been working fine. Um, I have all those predefined messages and then it's got a little keyboard on there. So I can actually write texts, custom texts, and send them to my wife if need be. Um, just to let her know, you know, if I'm running behind or anything like that. Works pretty good, USB rechargeable. 
That's my uh, new piece of gear I'm nerding out on this trip. But anyway, yeah, I'm gonna make some soup and then I'll pack up the uh, hammock back there. Should be quick and easy. Didn't use the tarp again, so I'll be out of here um, pretty smoothly this morning. Just stuff away the hammock and the quilts and get back on the trail. That is the plan. We'll see what the rest of this uh, loop looks like today. where we came from yesterday that ridge up there probably right around here on the other side is uh where that spring was yesterday and uh perhaps that nice campsite that i originally saw that was just too early probably up on that high point there <sighs> the sun is out Left camp by nine o'clock. Re-upped on water. About seven miles to go today. Shouldn't be too bad. I finished my book last night, Bourdain's uh, Kitchen Confidential, by the campfire. That was nice. So I had to go into the coffers of my Audible app and see what I had downloaded. I had a river runs through it. Not bad, seemed, uh, seemed appropriate. go just like that mission complete that is the Jeep we are back vehicle still there still in one piece I can dig it a little muddy but that's all right and I am quite hungry quite tired got some bugs on me too it is warm out but, you know, that's spring. Careful what you wish for, right? No snow, no ice, but the bugs are back. But I'll take it. I enjoyed it. It's nice to have the pack off. And, uh, yeah, we knocked out the seven miles today. And, uh, like I said, total of about 14 miles or something like that. It was beautiful. I liked it. Um, Little Schloss was a cool view. There is a such thing as Big Schloss around here as well, which is more popular apparently, but I just, you know, decided to do the uh, lesser traveled trail and I liked it. I haven't seen a soul the whole time. There is one car in the parking lot here right now from Virginia. Um, perhaps they went up onto the trail the way I started the other day, but I'm going to wrap it up. That wind is picking up a little bit, clouds are out, but all in all, a great trip. So that's about it for me. I had a blast. Thank you, West Virginia and Virginia. And uh, yeah, that's it. So till next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now, it's cheeseburger time. <laughs>